Oh, hi. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a Myrtle Stitch hat. And the loom we're going to be using is the Cindy Wood Loom 5 8 inch gauge. And um, it's a 42 peg, which is a youth hat size. Uh, for a woman, you're going to be wanting to use a bigger loom than that because um, it's a youth size. And I'm using I Love This Chunky Yarn. And it is in the color Plum Garden Hobby Lobby Yarn. The loom hook I'm using is from Touche Crochet. And she has an Etsy shop. And she makes mostly crochet hooks, but she does make a few loom hooks. So to get started, um, we'll do the brim. So I'm going to show you how to do a curvy wave brim. So first we're going to make a slip knot. I'm going to put it on the first peg. And we're going to take our loom hook. Put it into the loop here and scoop up the yarn. See? It's like that. A loop. And tighten it at the back. There. And then we're just going to put this loop behind the next peg. Take the working yarn. Put it through and snug it up. Behind the next peg. Take the working yarn and snug it up. Behind the next peg, working yarn, snug it up. And you're just going to do that all the way around the loom. Just like that. And you can snug it up in one motion. I just have my my kind of system here and I just give it three tugs and it gets the right tightness. But whichever way works for you. You don't want it so tight you can't knit it over, but you do want it snug so your loops look nice. Okay, and I will just put you on pause and I will meet you up close to the end of this cast on. Okay, so here we are close to the end and I'm going to do the last peg here and then I'm just going to take the yarn and put it over and then I'm going to knit it over. <laughs> had, to, <laughs> had trouble finding that loom hook. <laughs> and if it's tight, you can just put them over one at a time. There. Okay, and that's already just a stitch on there. So we're going to now do a row of U knit. So we put the yarn over the peg and just knit it over. All the way around. Oh. I will put you on pause again and we will meet up near the end of the row. Okay, so I'm just nearing the end of the row now. Last peg. And then we're going to do a row of pearl. So I'm going to go on the first loop and take the working yarn, put it through this loop and pull up the working yarn and put it on the peg. Oop. Okay, so hook in here, take the working yarn, scoop it up, go up and just put it on the peg. So one row of pearl. And there's lots of videos on how to do a pearl stitch. 
Okay, so I'll meet you up when we get all the way around again. Okay, so I'm just about to do the last peg in the row. And there's the pearl. Okay, now we're going to be doing um, the brim. And the brim is a row of owl eye, a row of pearl, a row of owl eye, a row of pearl. Just keep repeating that. So to start the owl eye row, you do a U wrap over the first peg. And you come back around, wrap it, and wrap the second peg. And keep it loose. And knit it over. Whatever peg you're on is peg one. Wrap peg one and two like that. And knit it off. And I have lots of videos on owl eye. Okay. On peg one. In front of peg one and two. In front of peg one. One and two. And we just keep going all the way around the loom. Okay, so I will see you again when we get near the end of the row. Okay, and I'm just finishing off the row here. And then you come. And then you give this its second wrap because you're at the end of the row and you just wrap it. And then the first one is a pearl. And you do your row of pearl. So that's how you do it. And then when you get all around and you finish the pearl, you do the wrap on for the first owl eye and then come around and wrap it its second time to continue around. And you just keep going until you get the length that you want. And uh, then you just start in with the stitch you're going to do with the hat. So I'm going to uh, finish the brim. And we'll see you in a while. Okay, I'm just finishing the final uh, bit of the brim. And so I'm just finishing with um, our eye stitch here. So um, that's what you want to do. You want to finish the last row with owl eye. So once you finish the last row, and you're going to come over and you're going to go over again to knit that to get the final owl eye stitch on there. Okay. And uh, we can take a look at the brim. Here it is. I did it about two, a uh, little over two inches. And um, that, there's what it looks like on the inside. And um, if you take a look here, you'll see that there's no jog, which is what happens when you go sometimes from knit to purl, is that you can really see where you did it, but it's pretty seamless when you do the curvy wave. You can't really tell. Okay, so now that we've done the first row of our eye, and that's actually the first row of the stitch pattern. It's two rows, and it's one row of our eye, and since we ended the the brim with owl eye. There's our first row. And the second row is juniper stitch. That's what makes myrtle stitch a row of owl eye and a row of juniper stitch. So I'm going to show you how to do the juniper stitch. You're just going to take your yarn. And just a sec, I have to adjust something. Okay, I'm back. My camera was slipping a little bit. Okay, so we finished with the owl eye, and now we're going to start with the juniper stitch so that we have our myrtle stitch. So we're going to go in front of it, come behind, and wrap it again. So we have two bits of yarn on here that we just wrapped. See, we're wrapping it in a U-wrap, but we're going to come behind and wrap it again. So we have two wraps on here, and the 
the yarn that we already had on. Then we're going to take the two bottom ones and bring them over the top. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Take the working yarn, go over, wrap over again, and the two bottom come over the top. So wrap, come back and wrap again. Two bottom, go over the top. Very, very easy to do. Always the two bottom over the top. Because what you're doing is you're moving one piece of the working yarn over the other piece of the working yarn, see? As well as the bottom stitch. So you're just going to go all the way around the loom doing this stitch and then you'll start with owl eye starting the row the same way you did with the curvy wave stitch and then we're just going to keep going until you get the length of the hat that you want. Um, I'm going to do about seven inches um, but you can do it as long as you like. That's pretty short, but I, like I say, I have a small head. So we'll just keep going for a while and then uh, see how our hat is looking. So I will see you in a bit. Well, I've got a lot more done. So I'm down to where I'm getting close to where I'm going to bind off. And because I want to make a, a quite slouchy hat, I'm going to add um, a few rows of owl eyes so that it's much looser at the back. And I'm going to do a really good um, reducing of the size on the drawstring bind off. So um, what I'm going to do is add, for me, a few rows of owl eye. Um, you don't have to do that. You can just add one if you want. And um, I'm going to take you to the bind off video. And then we'll look at the final project. I have a bind off video of another hat already out there to show you how to do it. And then we will come back and see what this one looks like. So I will see you in a bit. Okay, so we're going to do a reduced brim on the hat. And so the first thing we do, and I've already done this, of course, is done the one row of E-wrap. So you can do this not just with this hat, but with any hat that you have that you want to do a reduced brim so, so that it's not bulky. So it lays flatter and it works especially nice on slouch hats. So whenever you do that, always do a row of E-wrap just before you start, no matter what stitch you are doing. And the reason for that is E-wrap is nice and loose, so it makes it easier to move stitches over. Okay, so that's the reason for that. So you do the row of E-wrap, and then we're going to start moving stitches to reduce. And it's a very easy reduction to get a flatter brim. We're going to count every four pegs. One, two, three, four. And on the fourth peg, we're just going to take it off the loom and then move it over to the peg before. So now you have two stitches on the loom. And number four is blank. And then you go one, two, three, four again. You take the, the loom off, or the stitch off and put it on the peg before. So now if we go from the beginning, we got one, two, two pieces on here and a blank peg. One, two, two pieces on here and a blank peg. And you're going to do that all the way around the loom every fourth. You're going to be moving over to the third. When you get to the end, if it's not equally divisible, you'll have some extra loops with thread on, yarn on, that you can't move over. And that's okay. Leave them on. It's better to leave them on than to reduce too much. So I'll meet you back when we get all the way and that we reduced by moving every fourth peg onto the third. So we'll see you in a few. Okay, so I've gone all the way around now and I've moved them all over and uh, mine did turn out fairly even. I have just three here instead of two. So that's 
all because it's not evenly divisible. Okay, so now what we're going to do is do another round of EREP. And how you do that is you EREP all the pegs that have yarn on them, knit them over, and with this one we take both loops over, then go behind any empty pegs and EREP the pegs that have yarn on them. Taking the two off, skipping by going behind the empty peg and then just e-wrapping. Okay, so you just do that all the way around the loom and I will see you back at the beginning. Okay, so I've e-wrapped around the loom and now we're going to do our next reduction. So we have the three pieces of yarn that are on the three pegs and then on either side pegs with no yarn. So we're always going to be working with the ones that have yarn on them and you're going to go one, two, three and you're going to take the yarn from number two now and move it over to number one. And then on the next three peg grouping, you're going to do the same thing. Now on the first one, I had four yarns. So here, I'm going to just ignore the extra yarn here. And on two, I'm just going to move it over to one, like that. Okay, so you just go all the way around, taking the, the yarn from number two and putting it on number one. It's a little awkward for me. <laughs> And I'll meet you up when we have that all done. Okay, now that you've done that, you have yarn on every second peg. So now we just e-wrap around doing the same thing, going behind the pegs with no yarn and e-wrapping the pegs with yarn. Taking both loops over, going behind the ones with no yarn and just e-wrapping. So I'll see you when you have that done. Okay, so you finished. And then all we're going to do now is take this yarn and put it around the loom and then another half. We just want to make sure we have it long enough and cut it because we're all reduced and now we're just going to take it off the loom. Whoops. <laughs> off there. So you just take a needle. You can use your loom hook also if you want. You don't have to have a needle. And we're just going, I'm just going to thread the needle with the yarn. There, got it this time. There we go. And then all you're going to do is go around the loom and just scoop up that yarn and get it inside this. So we go up and we just scoop up that loop. Okay, so I will just meet you up when we've scooped up all the loops. Okay, and then just be sure you've picked up every single loop and then go back into the first loop that you started with. Then you can just take your needle off. At this point, I'm just going to cut this a little bit smaller so it's easier to work with. And then take my loom hook and I'm just going to start popping all these off the loom. Okay. 
You can even do it with your fingers. <laughs> There. And it's off the loom. And then at this point, all we're going to be doing is drawing in the hat. So just draw it in a little ways. And then you're going to take the yarn and put it to the inside of the hat. Although the inside of this hat looks really good. Too. <laughs> just as good as the outside. Okay. And then you're just going to pull it closed until you get it all the way closed. Nice and tight. Now what I do is I hold it tight and I usually go in and check and make sure that I've drawn it up evenly and you can see that it's just a nice flattened brim. But now we can put the needle back on, cut this shorter again. Just save enough to sew it up and weave it in. And thread your needle. Okay, now I want to make sure that this is nice and tight so that uh, we don't end up with a hole anywhere. And then I'm just going to put this through a couple of the of the yarns and make a knot. And I got that tail stuck in there. <laughs> there we go. Just make a nice tight knot to hold it closed. And then you can see where the center was right there. And then I'm just going to sew around it. Now if you were sure this was always going to be the inside of the hat. You could even just sew it across. But I'm going to sew around to keep it neat for the reason that I might be using this side too. This hat is very nicely reversible. But it gives you that option. And I'm just going to sew around. And every once in a while, I'm just going to put a little knot on it. There, get that working iron out of there and sewing around here. And then I'm just going to do another knot. I just wouldn't want it to ever come undone. And when you're sure you have the hat all very securely sewn, you just do another little knot and you are done. There we go. And then you can weave in the end of the yarn. I'm not going to bother doing that now just to, to keep it there. Turn the hat to the other side. And there you go. You have a nice flat brim. See? Just flattens it out. has a really nice little shape to it. If you laid it down like this, you can just see how nice and flat it is. Just an easy way to reduce your brim. And it's really great on slouchy hats. Okay. Okay, so here's my hat done. And then, of course, you always, always set your stitches. And 
here is the reduced brim nice and flat here and then here it is as a slouchy hat there we go you can see it has lots of slouch to it so there you go and I hope you enjoyed the video um, but actually maybe we should just take a quick look at the stitches see how nice they are they're beautiful stitches now my picture probably didn't even pick up the stitch near as good as it is it's a gorgeous gorgeous stitch and your inside just looks like this and it's pretty interesting too so if you wanted to make the hat reversible you sure can look at that so anyway <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video and bye